السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم نسیم فرام کشمیر انڈیا آئی وانٹ ٹو آسک وائی ٹیلی ایونجلس آف ادر ریلیجنس ادر دین اسلام آر ناٹ اشیمڈ آف مینی ناک آؤٹس گون بائی یو اینڈ احمد دیداد رحیم اللہ ان ڈبیٹس آر دے فالوورس ڈیف اینڈ بلائنڈ آر دے ناٹ کین دے ناٹ ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین تھروتھ وتھ پروف اینڈ اونلی ٹیلس وتھ نو ریفرنس اینڈ پروف A similar category of question was asked, is also asked by Ariz Ali, student from Jhasi, India. Will we ever get to see one last debate of Dr. Zakir Naik? So both these questions are on debates. And the first question opposed the question that how come these tele-evangelists, even after getting a knockout from Sheikh Ahmed Didadari Mullah and from me, aren't they ashamed? Even after getting a knockout, they're continuing and how are the followers yet believing in can they differentiate between what is truthful and evident or as compared to tales without any proof let me tell you one thing sister that as far as saying that tele evangelists aren't ashamed i don't agree with you because you hardly find any famous tele evangelist having debate with sheikh didat or myself I have seen several debates of Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Some are less popular, some are medium popular. Very few are very popular. And the most popular person that Sheikh Ahmed Didat had debate was with, with Jimmy Swaggart. That was in the 80s. All the others who he had debate with were either less popular or medium. And at the time of Sheikh Didat, it was common for Christian missionaries to have debates. Later on, Sheikh Didad made it so evident that all these famous people now are afraid. So I wouldn't agree with you that they are not ashamed. They are very ashamed. When Sheikh Didad debated with Jimmy Swaggart in the early 80s, 1980s, that time Jimmy Swaggart was one of was the most famous Christian televangelist of that era he was one of the best orators available on the face of the earth so much so that before the debate one of the fans of Sheikh Ahmed Didat told Sheikh Ahmed Didat but that I am from America I know Jimmy Spaghetti he's an excellent orator please do not go and debate with him he will chew you and spit you out imagine a fan of Sheikh Ahmed Didat before the debate telling Sheikh Didat don't go for the debate he will chew you and spit you out what a discouraging statement by a fan of Sheikh Didat but Alhamdulillah our hero our Islamic icon in the field of Dawah Sheikh Didat with the help of Allah goes ahead and he had a debate and Alhamdulillah Allah's help was with him and it was a knockout for Jimmy Swaggart. He never expected that. So much so that it was a turning point in Sheikh Didat's Dawa life. And later on, mashallah, the doors were opened to him. He started having large audiences. He got the King Faisal Award. Alhamdulillah, it was phenomenal. But there were other people who Sheikh Didat had debate with who were famous, but not as famous as Jimmy Swaggart. I don't know of anyone close to Jimmy Swaggart. He was the most famous. And I'm sure he might not have, or he might have watched Sheikh Didat for sure because he's an experienced, but he was overconfident. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, according to me, is also one of the best orators. But in auditory skills, of course, Jimmy Swaggart in terms of skills, will get more marks than Sheikh Didat. But Sheikh Didat was on the haq. He had the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gave a knockout to Jimmy Spaghetti. Alhamdulillah. And we know that. If you compare with the other debates, some debates people are presidents of some organization. They are not known at all. Example, Anis Sarosh. He debated Sheikh Ahmed Didat in London, Royal Albert Hall, 
on the topic is Jesus God. He got a knockout. He came back again after a few years had a debate in Birmingham on is the Bible or Quran the word of God. So these people who are less famous, they would love to have a debate with a famous personality. At that time, Sheikh Jizdat was famous. So that even if they lose, they will become popular. But a famous televangelist would never take that risk. Jimmy Spaghet was a fool. He took a risk. He underestimated Sheikh Didat and he was knocked out. I don't know any one of the caliber of Sheikh Didat who had a debate with any one of the caliber of Jimmy Spaghet who had a debate with Sheikh Didat. Yet there were other people who were less famous. So coming to your question, aren't the televangelists ashamed? The famous televangelists are ashamed and today I challenge any famous televangelist who has a large following to ever debate with anyone who knows debating skills. And the answer is no. If you see my debates, I've debated about in public nine, ten times, a little bit more. And the most famous personality that I debated was with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. And you know about it. It was in 2006. And Sri Sri Ravi Shankar is also, alhamdulillah, if not as famous as Jimmy Swaggart, but equally, Jimmy Swaggart had a budget of $400 million a year. Most of these top televangelists have hundreds of millions of dollar annual budget. Jimmy Swaggart had a budget of $400 million a year to keep his head above water. That means more than a million dollar a day. Shri 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 Ravi Shankar also had a large budget. May not be as big as Jimmy Swaggart, but it's in tens of millions of dollars. Very famous. He draws audiences of hundreds of thousands of people. I think maybe he did not see my debates. And most of the programs he had in the interfaith dialogue, you know, always you scratch my back, I scratch your back. But when I had a debate with Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, maybe he saw one of my videos a day before. And the day of the debate, he put a condition. We'd already decided. There was the middleman who arranged a dialogue between me and Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. It was decided that he will speak first for one hour, I will speak for one hour, that's it. He said, no. He called in the morning, just a few hours before the debate. I will not speak first. If you force me to speak first, I will not come for the debate. I am going to his home, hometown, Bangalore. I said, okay, fine, done. Why don't we do one thing? Okay, I'll speak first. But instead of one hour, I'll speak for 15 minutes. Then you speak for one hour, I'll speak for 10 minutes. He agreed. He realized that the person who speaks second has the advantage. Little advantage, not a lot. So I spoke first for 15 minutes. When he spoke, he could hardly speak for half an hour. He had no matter. Then again came for 10 minutes. I spoke maybe a minute or more than my time because that matter. And you know the outcome of the debate. Now coming to your question. That why aren't the televangelists ashamed? I said yes, they are ashamed. And Shri Shri Ravi Shankar is very famous. He was surely ashamed, so much so that at the end of the dialogue, the debate that we had, he threatened me. It was a live telecast of the launch of the Peace TV. Peace TV English was launched with the live telecast of the debate between myself and Shri Ravi Shankar in Bangalore on the topic, the concept of God and Islam and Hinduism. The concept of God and Islam and Hinduism in the light of sacred scriptures. And there were more than 50,000 people live. He's telling me, do not telecast again, otherwise there will be riots. It was a peaceful program. Not a single person came and caught anyone's scholar. Not a single person from the audience of more than 50,000 created a ruckus. It was very peaceful. So why are you saying at the end of the debate, don't telecast that there will be riots. Now that everything is peaceful because he knew that he had got a knockout punch. Then Sri Sri Ravi Shankar files the case against me, saying that I have got copyrights for the video because the videos were telecast on Peace TV and became very popular. So he filed a case of 10 crores against me, lying that he has copyrights. Alhamdulillah, we won the case. We are yet showing in Peace TV. But on YouTube, because he's there, there are some different rules of YouTube. He's present there. 
and we don't have the copy because I left India and the judgment came after I left India because the case went on for many years. If I have the judgment copy and if I show it to the YouTube, he it will disclaim that he has copyrights. But because after I left India, I could not get hold of the judgment copy. That is the reason you won't find the YouTube of this debate with myself and Shishir Shankar on the YouTube. But you will find it on the Alidaya platform. It's available free for anyone. It's a free video. It's a free debate. Go to Alidaya, Muslim, non-Muslim, don't have to pay anything. Go to the video section of Dr. Zakir Naik. In the free videos, you'll find this debate available. So I do not agree with you that televangelists are not ashamed. They are ashamed. That is the reason he wants to stop me. And one of the reasons that the government went against me according to some sources of mine is that Shri Shri Ravi Shankar had a hand in it. He was so ashamed that he wanted to, he could not do anything legally, so he did illegally and went through and all these, you know, I'm here, mashallah, I would like to thank him because of him I came to a better country, Malaysia, and I'm doing more dawah here. I thank him and I thank the Modi government for doing this. Coming to a second part of the question. So let me tell you that they are ashamed. Yes, they are. If he's popular, he's ashamed. If he's not popular, he's not ashamed. He would want it. A less popular person would like to get popular even if he gets a knockout. He'll be known. He'll become popular. So there's no question of... But a popular televangelist would never want to debate. Coming to a second part. And these followers, can't they see the difference between the truth and the falsehood? Can't they see the difference between something which is spoken logically and something illogical? Of course! Not 100%, but in numbers it's huge, percentage would be small. Immediately after the debate of Shishi Ravi Shankar, there were many people who accepted Islam on the same day. There was one volunteer of Shishi Ravi Shankar, an elderly man wearing a batch of Shishi Ravi Shankar, you know, saying he's God. He comes and he touches my feet. He's saying from today, I consider you God. I told him, brother, this is shirk. In Islam, Allah is Almighty God. No human being can. And I explained to him Islam and, and mashallah. So, and he accepted Islam. I told him, no human being can be God. And I gave him the concept of Surah class. So there were many people on the same day who accepted Islam. After the William Campbell debate, many Christians accepted Islam in US and Chicago. But you cannot say 100%. The percentage is small. Numbers are large. Shishi Rav Shankar yet has a large following. As the Quran says, Sum mum book mum form you, Sum mum book mum um yun form la yun. The deaf, the dumb, the blind, they will not come to the straight part. So if Allah has put a seal on the heart, you cannot do anything. But to say that none of their followers agree, no. Surely he had a dent. Today, even if I give a million dollar to Shishi Ravi Shankar to have a second debate, he will not have. It's a great damage to him. It's a great damage to his business. So, there are many people from the followers who will stop following him. And one example is, there was a very staunch follower of his, who was a Hindu. He released a video that what Shri Shri Ravi Shankar did after the debate. He took out a video against me, he used cheap tactics, he filed a case against me. That fan spoke in Hindi for about, I think, 20, 10 to 20 minutes. And he said, I'm totally disappointed with Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. I had so much respect for him. He's broken all the on rules of honesty. And, and Alhamdulillah. So you have umpteen number of examples. Surely he might have lost tens of thousands of followers. The following is in millions. So to say that people will lose their following, I don't like it. They will. But the percentage will not. You cannot expect majority to leave him. Because the majority as Allah has put a seal on their heart. They are deaf, dumb and blind. But in numbers, it will be huge. So let me tell you, the televangelists today are scared. Therefore, no popular televangelist will ever have a debate with me today. Second point, the followers all will not agree, but there are in numbers, they are large, in percentage, they are small. Coming to the second question, that when will we see a last debate of Dr. Zakir Naik? And the last debate, as most of you may be aware, of mine was with Shishi Ravi Shankar in January 2006 at the launch of the Peace TV. Why people now will not debate 
with me. Number one, previously, initially, I did not have much criteria for debating with a personality, with anyone else, with a non-Muslim. Only non-Muslim and he should have some standing, that's it. But as I kept on in going involved in the field of Dawah, Allah helped me. I had more debates, I had more lectures and the popularity increased. And then, before I had a debate with Sheikh, before I had a debate with Shisha Vishankar, I put a criteria. I had a lecture. In, at that time, I had a talk in Kerala. And there were about half a million to one million people that gathered. So that time my criteria was I will only debate with the person who can minimum get 10,000 people for his life lecture. Not for a conference, but individually if he gives an ad, at least he should get 10,000 people. That is 2% of my half a million. And of course, Shri Ravi Shankar, he has given talks where more than 100,000 people have come. So he qualified for that. After that, when Peace TV was launched, by Allah's grace, the popularity increased. Peace TV had a following of 200 million people. MashaAllah, all the four channels on the network. I had a talk in Kishan Ganj in 2012, where MashaAllah, it was a three-day talk. And first day, half a million people came. Second day, 800,000 people came. And the last day, more than a million people came there. Live, more than a million people on a single gathering. So that time my criteria changed that anyone who wants to have a debate with me should be able to get a minimum 20,000 people. That is 2% of my 1 million. If he can at least get 2% of the audience, which is the largest audience I've addressed live, he's worth debating. That means he should be a famous personality. Many people may object. Why is this criteria there? Isn't it illogical? Is Dr. Zaki next scared? Today, there are hundreds of non-Muslims. Christians and Hindu who would love to debate with me who would give money also to debate with me why because they want to get popular I disagreed with your first statement that a famous televangelist will never debate with me unless he's a fool but a small person who is not known or less known would love to debate even though he'll get a knockout he'll get famous for example, imagine that Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay, he gets the world title of the heavyweight boxer in the world. Imagine a street boy comes and says, I will challenge Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay for a boxing match and I'll knock him out. Do you think he will fight with him? And the answer is no. It will be foolish to fight with him. And even if he fights with him and if he gives him a knockout, people will blame him. Why are you fighting with such a small boy? Why you are a world champion? How can you get instigated by a, a street boy challenging you? And you will say, Muhammad Ali Kashif will never do such a thing. He will never have a boxing match with a street boy. And if a world champion is there, what is the rule? If you want to fight him, first you have to win the lower matches. Then you have to go to the qualifying matches. Then you have to defeat many people and then can you have, when you reach that level, not the same level, but somewhere close to him, then there can be a match arranged. So once you get a heavyweight boxing championship title, you will not debate with Tom, Dick and Harry. There will be few people who will be qualified to debate with you. Handful. Today, there are hundreds of Christian missionaries, all these street boys, who are, don't have a following. If they give a lecture, they will not even have 1,000 people. Many people have challenged me. Dr. Zakir, you can't get 500 people want to challenge me. So my criteria is that you should at least be able to get 20,000 people for a live lecture anywhere in the world. Have in your hometown, no problem. You're famous in America, famous in Chicago, famous in UK, okay, no problem. Have a debate. At least give a talk to 20,000 people where you are the only speaker. If you go to a conference and some other speaker, then if you address an audience where there are more than 20,000, that is not the qualification required. The required qualification is minimum you should be able to get 20,000. And what I'm saying is not absurd. 
I know today more than 100 religious speakers in the world who can get more than 20,000 people in India. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar can get more than 20,000 people. Ramdev Baba is there. Then Jaggi Vasudev is there. Sadhguru. There are many. There are many local speakers who are religious speakers. At least there will be 20, 30 or more than that in India who can get more than 20,000 people for the talk. All over the world there will be more than 100 people. For example, Morris Cirillo who is a faith healer, for example, many him, many, many, but will these people debate with me? And the answer is no, they are not fools, because they know that once they are knocked out, the whole business, the whole following will be dented, there is no question, yes, there will be hundreds of low level people, non-Muslims, uh, Christians, Hindus, who would love to debate me to get famous? Hundreds. And we receive invitation. I tell them that, okay, fine. If a Christian challenges me, I said, bye. There are more than 50 Christian missionaries I know who can gather more than 20,000 people living in USA and European countries. You give your material, which is against my talks, convince them. They will never debate with me. No one will agree why. Because they know that the material is not convincing. They think, okay, I'm a very good debater. The Akira gave knockout point to Dr. Zakir Naik like a street boy telling Cassius Clay, I will knock you out. They are all into hallucinations. These people, when they debate with other people, they are already knocked out. Yet they make the videos. They may be famous in the YouTube channel. Famous means, okay, maybe having a few hundred thousand followers. No, no, maybe having some on the Facebook a couple of hundred thousand followers or maybe half a million here or there but that doesn't carry weight if you want to have a following okay alhamdulillah now today on the facebook there are more than 22 million followers of mine anyone who has more than 10 million followers on the facebook i'm going to debate with him but 10,000 100,000 it's there are millions of people in the world who have got more than 100,000 followers millions on the facebook what is great about it one criteria is, if you can get 20,000 people live for your talk, I think you are worth debating. I will debate with you. Irrespective from where you come, as long as you are a non-Muslim, you will have a debate on comparative religion, on Islam and Christianity, Islam and Hinduism. And there are many Hindus today who can get this audience. And there was a person in Malaysia, one of the Hindus, who told me, why can you have a debate with Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev? I said, I'm not interested, but if he wants, I'm willing. Yes, lately he's been speaking against Islam. I challenge him. Let him come. Okay, we'll have in Malaysia, we'll have in a third country, not in India. He is a large follower. He's not a fool. He's a good orator. He's not a fool to have a debate with me. He surely may have seen my videos. Do you think he's a fool? So anyone who can get more than 20,000 people, his Facebook following, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe a couple of million Surely will not be more than 10 million, but I don't mind debating him because he can get more than 20,000 people for his talk. So whether it be Ramdev Baba, whether it be Sadhguru, Jaggi Vasudev, whether Shishi Ravi Shankar, whether Benny Hinn, Morris Cirillo, whether it be Billy Graham, or maybe Franklin Graham, all these people, they have weight. So that's the reason we don't debate with people. So now... <coughs> Shri Shri Ravi Shankar was the last person, maybe about 15 years back, in 2006, who agreed to have a debate. So, Allah Allah, whether that was the last debate or there will be some other people who have a large following who would want to debate with me, like Jimmy Swagat debate with Shaykh Dida. Chances are very less, so you will have to consider maybe Shri Shri Ravi Shankar debate was the last debate. It's available on the platform. If Allah wills and if someone agrees who has a large following debate with me, I'll be more than welcome to organize the debate, you know, to prove Islam has the solution to the problems of humankind. I hope that answers the question and this was the limited time we had for today. And inshallah, since I'll be taking 